Thank you, and this is a very great question, and people have definitely figured out how to use them to have fun. <laughs> but I'm here today to tell you yeah, why and how we can use them to actually power our homes. And it's a very important question, because especially here for San Francisco and California, where the population is expected to double in the next 20 years. And this growing population needs a growing amount of um, energy. And we have to pay for this energy. Energy is not for free. And so every one of us has to pay the monetary price, but also the environmental price. So California still runs um, half on natural gas, and we're emitting around 350 million tons um, CO2 per year. And at the same time, yeah, California, we have this um, um, ambitious climate and renewable targets. So if we look at these two facts, we can come to the conclusion there is a, a growing demand and an urgent demand to increase renewable energies. And yet this trend of a, a growing demand for renewable energies, especially on coastlines, this is not a local trend, this is a global trend. And the US is a great example where half of the population actually lives within 50 miles of the coastline. But to come back to our original question, we have to better understand the resource of waves. And I've been always fascinated by the ocean. I can sit on the beach for hours and stare at the waves. And I'm sure you experience the same while staring in a campfire. And I think we're human. We're so um, fascinated and hypnotized um, by both of these natural elements. It's because there is so much power in there. And to give you an idea how much power are in waves, um, one ship length of California coastline has as much power as an entire soccer field full of solar panels. And this high power density is the first big advantage of wave energy. The second big advantage is, it's, um, yeah, it's the less um, variability. So the sun only shines during the day. Um, wave, uh, wave power is available um, day and night time. And the third big advantage is its predictability. So if you want to increase renewable energy percentage in the grid, um, yeah, one of the major hurdles is the predictability. And so wave energy is actually predictable a week in, a ha um, in advance and uh, yeah, compared to wind energy, which can change in the order of seconds. So to give you an idea how much power there's actually available, and in the US, um, we can see that's one of the four best spots in the world to um, yeah, harness ocean wave power. And recently, the Department of Energy found out that we could power yeah, half of the US just on wave energy. But still, there is not a technical solution there. And so sometimes when engineers struggle um, and yeah, we can't find a solution, then we actually step back and, and find inspiration in nature. And that was the case in, uh, um, also in, with our technology. And here we can see a very special place in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see on the, on the left side, the um, big ground swells travel till the coastline, till they break and completely vanish. And on the right side, suddenly all the waves disappear. And this place has been known by fishermen and passed on, and it's called the mud hole. And there is a certain mud floor on, on this um, location and this mud hole. And as you can see, as the waves travel over this mud, then the mud starts to vibrate. And then this vibration, similar to a shock absorber in a car, extracts all the energy. So a researcher here at Berkeley, um, Professor Alam, tried to explain this phenomena. And he created a mathematical model that uses a viscoelastic seabed that's hooked on a grid um, of springs and dampers. And then he had this great idea, yeah, why not using these dampers as generators and then actually produce power with it? And it's quite co counterintuitive to have a device being on the bottom, but that was one of the major hurdles um, of the industry so far, that most of the devices on the surface, they just struggle with the high um, range of loads and safety factors needed, and these slamming forces and yeah, storms coming in. So we saw this great potential of this technology uh, around two years ago. So we started building the yeah, first proof of concept prototype. And there we want to give the credit to our uh, lab neighbor professor who borrowed the bike pump um, we used for this experiment. Um, <laughs> And that wasn't working that well, but then we improved and built a first working model that could actually yeah, mimic the mud behavior. And with this device, we could absorb over 80% of the energy. But we didn't get a lot of energy out that we could actually use in a, in a mechanical form. So the last year, we're working hard on um, developing a system that's actually able to produce a significant amount of energy. 
And then finally, last summer, yeah, we further developed the system and reached over 40%. And that's actually our device working in a wave tank here at Berkeley. And you can see as the waves travel over the carpet, yeah, the carpet adopts the wave motion and then drives these pumps which are underneath. And so to give you an understanding of the mechanical principle behind, it works like an hydraulic jack where a, high, um, a, a large area and, and, and a low pressure um, gets converted into a high pressure on a small area. And the major challenge was um, actually to build a, a material that's able to yeah, um, mimic the mud behavior. And so we used the composite material out of natural rubber and uh, fiberglass, and this material worked pretty well. And then the second big challenge was really to find a, a generator that would come up with um, high enough power that we can use. And so we developed um, a very high flow optimized, um, efficient, um, low friction pump. And yeah, with this setup then and, and three um, generators in total, we could um, convert over 40% hydraulic power. And so since then we improved and um, yeah, built a new generator system that sits on top and then um, with a way where we can actually control it. And here you can see um, in this short little clip how effectively our system actually is able to extract the waves. So I replay it in a second, but um, yeah, look at how much wave is coming in and then how much um, wave height we actually see be, um, after the device. Um, and yeah, we had the fluorescent dye in there because we did visual wave height measurement. And uh, it was on top, of the, on top of the device. And so to better understand um, the physics behind, we used uh, computational fluid dynamics. Um, and yeah, with this we could simulate the dynamic pressure um, to better understand the fluid structure interaction. And here we can see as the waves travel over the carpet, this orbital particle motions actually get split into half. And then we have two separate waves and the um, upper one gets deeper. And then because of this pressure difference, between the upper and the lower one, similar to the pressure difference on the airplane wing, then we can actually use this um, excitation force to generate power. So let's imagine we yeah, upscale one of our units to a 30 by 30 feet unit. And then we place it somewhere south of Ocean Beach where it's uh, yeah, not an area of recreational use. One single, of, one unit of our system would be able to power 180 homes in San Francisco. And this is equivalent to a yeah, thousand or a barrel oil per year. And to give you an idea how the system works on a, on a bigger scale, um, here we can see as the waves travel over, the, the carpet absorbs the waves and then we generate high pressure um, ambient salt water that can be brought on shore and then runs a hydraulic motor and can also be used um, yeah, to drive a reverse osmosis chamber um, to create fresh water. And that's actually, especially for California, facing the droughts in the last couple of years, um, a great application to use a renewable source um, yeah, for desalination. And our system in general has three major advantages. The first one is the higher survivability. As we heard, yeah, the major drawbacks in the industry were the high slamming forces on the surface. So the fact that the system can work efficient, submerged, is yeah, the major first advantage. The second is um, the higher efficiency. Because we're based on this natural phenomena, and at the same time, there's a trend that we see in the wind energy industry where the wind blades get bigger and bigger. And so similar, our device has the capability to upscale because the power of the waste and the width. And the last adva advantage is yeah, the visual impact. So the fact that it's submerged yeah, just comes with this major advantage. So what's next? Um, we're very um, yeah, happy about our progress and excited about our next steps. We're working towards the first ocean pilot um, and at the same time optimizing the system for yeah, full-scale integration into the grid. And so we're happy to be supported um, by the Berkeley Labs um, that attracts yeah, some of the best engineers and scientists in the world. So on all aspects of the simulation, engineering, but then also the bigger questions, um, yeah, we find experts to talk to. And then we um, yeah, got integrated into a great new program called the Cycloton Road um, since last year, and we get great um, support and mentorship there. So now that we better understand the resource and the technology, we can come back to our original question and we can have a closer look at San Francisco. Here we can see yeah, the, the average annual wave power is quite seasonal, but in, in average it has around 20 kilowatts um, 
per meter. So again, it's 30 times higher than, than wind and solar. So with a strip of, yeah, single strip of 33 miles um, and a device like ours that works at 60% efficiency, yeah, we could power an entire San Francisco. So yeah, because of the huge potential of the technology, we were um, won the first prize of the Burke Resource and Energy Collaborative the last two years. And yeah, we're awarded by MIT and Caltech Clean Energy Prize. And the National Geographic named us yeah, one of the five striking concepts of harnessed wave energy. And so we want to thank everyone at UC Berkeley um, yeah, that supported our progress so far, and then Science TV for these great video shots. And because it's very hard to find yeah, funding for renewable energy, and we did a crowdfunding campaign last year, so we want to thank all our backers as well. So to get back to our final question, uh, to our initial question, um, yeah, our final answer is yes, we can. Um, but it has to be in a mix of renewables. So similar to a good farmer, we have to have a healthy mix and use all locally available resources. So please visit us at uh, calwave.org um, or at Cycleton Road, and then we hope to see you at our first installation in San Francisco in the next couple of years.